Hey, future badass business owner, welcome back to the Start a Small Business Podcast, where each episode we will be walking you through the process of getting your small business from concept to open for business. In today's episode, we're going to discuss why you need to have a sales log from day one. Now, you're probably asking yourself, why on earth am I encouraging you to have a sales log? Well, it's really simple. No matter how good your memory is, you are going to forget things that happen. A sales log is a great tool for documenting things that happen each day that stand out so you don't forget it the following year. Now, this could be anything from weather uh, changes, things that happen, things in the community that impact your business, what sold, what didn't sell, what specials worked, what didn't, seasonality stuff that happened that you want to make sure that you either don't do again or you do again, uh, coupons that happen. Main thing is, is that you're documenting what went well and what went horribly wrong because part of growing your business is taking the mistakes of yesterday and turning them into wins the following year. It's also about not repeating the same things over and over. And if it is something good, you want to say, how do I improve on it and repeat that? Because no matter how good your memory is going to be, I promise you, you're gonna forget. I've been down this path before. I've done it myself. The thing that really helped me grow my sales year over year has always been documenting, whether you call it a sales journal or you call it a journal, no matter what you call it, even if it's just a book laying on the table, it is a tool that is in your arsenal that you can use. Trust me, you're not going to remember the exact dates that it rained for eight days straight. You might get an idea that you have during a season or something you're like, damn, I need to do this next year. You're not going to remember the exact stuff that you were thinking in the moment. So you want to write that down uh, because you really need to know so that you can be prepared. If your city shut down to improve the streets, to get them repaved, this is going to impact your sales today. And you want to be prepared for next year because maybe you didn't have that big spike you normally do. And you're like, man, what happened? Why did we not do as well last year when I'm looking at the numbers? And it's going to be something as simple that if you would just look it up in your sales journal, you're going to be go, oh yeah, I forgot. That's what happened. That's when they did that. But keep in mind, this also could be something that you did that was amazing. Maybe it was a great advertising campaign. It did really well and you want to make sure you do it again. And this time you're going to jot down notes. Maybe it's you want to do it sooner. Maybe it's that you want to buy more of something before it happens. Maybe it's you need to get some extra help during that time. But you're just making notes as to how you can improve it the following year year. You will want to jot down notes about ordering things earlier or getting into business earlier, or maybe saying, bite the bullet, dum-dum, hire that person two weeks earlier because you really need them so they can be trained before it gets busy. You know, things that you weren't prepared for, but this time you want to do them right. And this happens all the time with seasonal swing type businesses. Uh, People who have great sales at Christmas often need to work out their plans and purchases as early as October. And because November is way too late, but yet everybody tends to wait until November. And then they're always chasing their tail. Same thing with getting out of stuff. You want to time it to where when you're in a seasonal swing, you want to run out. That's why if you go to a Walmart or any kind of store, they're out of Christmas lights a couple days before Christmas because that stuff becomes worth nothing on Christmas day. So a lot of those places will run a lot of specials on the Christmas Eve type thing just to move that inventory out at the best price that they're going to be able to get. You know, think of your sales log or your journal as your second brain, just a way for you to capture important moments in the business to make sure you maximize them in the future. Because the longer you're in business, the more you're going to be able to spot some trends. And a lot of people will run their business from their gut. But when you run your business from your gut, you sometimes are too close to it and you tend to see it through perfect eyes. And trust me, your business is anything but perfect. So a sales log can help you by being that brain. And it's going to remember things a lot better because that was you in that moment, writing them down in real time. Uh, There also might be some things that happen in your community that can become part of your routine in the future, Uh, you know, just to remind you to do certain things. For example, most schools run a daddy-daughter dance. And if you have a business that can tie into this in any way, shape, or form, you want to take advantage of it year after year. When I had my ice cream shop, I messed it up for two years straight because I kept forgetting about it. And then I got smart and I had a plan that I jotted down where I tied it into the school so that all these folks could show up and have ice cream after the dance. And it worked out great. My store was full of fathers and daughters having a celebration after the dance. 
you know, some other things. Sometimes people don't realize they need to start hiring in March versus waiting until those April sales and then hiring because you have a week or two to be able to train them. We talked about that a little bit earlier. You know, earlier I talked about the big box retailer in Christmas time. Well, they do it during the summer months as well. You'll notice that patio furniture or bathing suits show up way before the summer. But yet if you try to purchase any of that during the summer, good luck to you because almost all the time they're out of it because they know they're not going to sell through it because sales start to drop off dramatically. But those sales take off way before the season because people are out looking because they want to get ready for that season. Do you have stuff or business in your business that that could also work for as well? Now, keep in mind, this book can be as simple or as complicated as you want it to be. Just create a system that you will use daily to capture what's happening now and you can revisit it later so that you can prepare better. Some people will just grab one of those uh, composition notebooks from school, take one of their kids and just use that. It doesn't have to be fancy. Some people will put it into their computer and some will put it as a field in their uh, on their phone and just jot down the notes every single morning uh, and jot down what happened the day before. There's even some apps that are little mini journals that you could use. So this is just a quick episode with a good best practice that I have found has really been helpful for me over the years. And I think that it'll be really helpful for you, especially if you have a lot of weather ups and downs and your business can be really impacted by weather, or you plan to run a lot of different coupons and you want to be able to capture how those can help you or benefit you. Uh, If you have seasonal swings, it's great for that type of business as well. So it's just a little tip to hopefully spark something that you want to put in place to be able to take advantage of year over year, because I promise you, your memory is not as good as you think it is. Uh, Trust me on that. Uh, You swear you will never forget it, but yet for some reason you start to get a little fuzzy on the ends of what happened. So uh, I used to use it all the time when I would order cakes, like during cake seasons, I would write down specific types of cakes that sold really well. So this way, the following year, I would have enough made to be able to take advantage of that. So whatever it is, uh, just figure out for your business. And I think you're going to find it very handy. In our next episode, we're going to continue to dive into marketing stuff and start really figuring out how you're going to create those customers to start coming into your new business. So you don't want to miss the next few episodes. All right. With that, I'll talk to you on the next episode. Bye for now.